Hey, Hashtag Nation, what's going on? I'm Mario, that's Paul. Uh, we're here at Hashtag Sports, where we're always trending now and trending later. Ladies and gentlemen, if it's your first time here and you want to get all the updates for Hashtag Sports and Buffalo Bills Talk and NFL Talk, make sure you go turn that red subscribe button gray. Also, if you want to be one of our premium members, you can also do that down right below this video. Uh, we have a bunch of different uh, categories you can go into, and all of those have different perks as far as you get the early release of some of our videos, some behind-the-scenes stuff, some uh, bre film breakdowns as well, and as well as a exclusive uh, chat with Paul and myself prior to our live feeds on Friday, so that's something you definitely want to check out. Aside from that, Paul, there's a third-year player on the offense that throws the ball very, very hard that people seem to be very, you know, gravitating toward about how he's going to progress into year three. However, I want to look this way, and I want to talk about a year three player on the defense, quarterback of the defense, and Mr. Tremaine Edmonds and his progressions. Well, I'll tell you what, if this quarantine goes any longer, my hair is going to look like Tremaine Edmonds. <laughs> that being said, and I don't think any of us need that. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't need that in my car. Um, <laughs> another thing we want to mention, too, really, really real quick at the onset, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be uh, going back in the car. We're going to start filming some car episodes. Yeah. So we can have small gatherings, um, not more than five people in the car at one time. Just thought, you know. Anyway, that being said, uh, Tremaine Adams, I think it's it's a fascinating thing because a lot of the focus and a lot of the onus has been on Josh Allen. How is he going to progress in year three with this offense, digs, all this other stuff. However, you look at the other side of the ball in a defense that has been well-established. You're talking about Tremaine Adams, who is clear, still one of the youngest players in his third year <laughs> on the team. The quarterback of that defense, trying to get everybody yeah. where he wants to go. Do you think, number one, is there a big bigger focus? That's probably like an easy question. Bigger focus on Allen versus Edmonds in year three. And what steps do you think Edmonds will take in his third year of playing uh, linebacker for this defense? Well, again, continuity is king here, right? So the Bills are in a really fortunate circumstance, both on offense and defense, because you've got the same coordinators, right? Yes. And that's something I don't think we as fans put a lot of stock in all the time is you're just kind of used to playing quarterback tango, right? Like, like but coordinator tango. Like guys are coming in, guys are leaving, guys are taking other jobs, guys are getting fired. Like it's kind of been the way that it's, well, I mean, more guys getting fired than <laughs> taking other jobs, but it's kind of the way that it's been in Buffalo. Um, but to have your coordinators this long is pretty sweet, to be honest with you, um, yeah. because Buffalo's had, you know, problems with head coaches for for a while yeah um and uh with that new coordinators all the time but here you have dable and leslie frazier entering now multiple years i mean that's that's a pretty sweet thing to have now as far as tremaine edmonds goes the reason that's so important is because the terminology the expectation is never changing right they're not asking him to do something different a lot of times when you have changes in offense or defensive coordinators they might want to change philosophy um, with how they want to approach game to game. And yeah. that's not something that you have. Um, so Edmonds is now significantly more comfortable than he was his rookie season. I was super concerned about Edmonds' his rookie season because he would just get sucked in on play action. He, mm -hmm. You could get a move in the wrong way. And you saw some of that still last year. But, you know, the, the jump from year one to year two was was huge. It was a huge jump. Well, it was that talk in the embedded series when he was with London Fletcher. That was the biggest thing, the biggest impact mm -hmm. I think he had. I know, I, and, you know, I was kind of half making a joke, half, um, you know, serious there. But you talk about the kid, he, he was throwing in there, thrust in there as a 19 year old rookie, mm -hmm. having to quarterback grown men on that defensive side of the ball. Right. And have to, having to, the learning curve, I think, for him was steeper than Josh Allen's, believe it or not. And I know I'm going to sound pretty mm -hmm. crazy in doing that, but you talk about this kid who was mainly a guy who would be an edge rusher and blitz and, and and put pressure on the quarterback yet now he's got to sit in the middle and be patient mm -hmm. and a lot of times he wasn't you're talking about a, a guy yeah. like Allen. i mean a lot of the things that we talk about with josh allen we could say just the same things for tremaine edmonds is he's an athletic freak he's a big kid he can he can go sideline to sideline he's, he's he's very he's very headsy uh in in that respect you talk about year one he was just trying to learn what it was what it was to be like as a middle linebacker in the nfl year two 
he was starting to get more seasoned, telling guys where to go, this and there. He wasn't getting really, you know, up in the play action every once in a while, even though it did happen sometimes. Right. Um, now you, we start to go into year three where now the Buffalo Bills, they have a nice mixture on that defensive squad of rookies and veterans. You got, you know, Josh Norman coming into the fold. You have A.J. Klein, who has played – seriously, he's probably played more in this defense than Jermaine Edmonds has, you know, coming into the fold. <laughs> Uh, another thing that I'm just so intrigued by, because we as a collective group of Bills fans, uh, hashtag Nation, Bills Mafia, however you want to call them, we think that the season would go down if you lose Josh Allen. Now, Josh Allen goes down, the season's done. right? On the other side of the ball, you almost have a very similar situation. Now, I know the quarterback's the most important position, so I haven't lost my mind yet. But you talk about... If Tremaine Edmonds goes down, God forbid he goes down, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much trouble is this defense in? 74. <laughs> it's not just the player that Tremaine is, right? Yeah. Because if you, if you statistically look from year one to year two, there were some red flags that might tell you that things weren't going well, right? Yeah. So he went from 80 solo tackles to 68 from his, from his rookie year to his second year. Okay. Right. But he doubled his tackles for loss. So he went from five to 10. Right. Yes. So I'm willing to take that difference. Yes. Right. Yes. He did have more. He had like eight more, you know, assisted tackles. So nominal there. Um, but the one that really gets me zero forced fumbles last season when his rookie season, he had two. And that's something this defense really stresses is generating turnovers um, and generating forced fumbles. So uh, that's technique to me. Right. When you're middle linebacker, who gets in on a lot of stuff. He had 115 combined tackles last season, 236 so far for his career. He's got two forced fumbles. That tells me that there's a little bit of technique that needs to get cleaned up there because that's something that the Bills definitely focus on is generating those turnovers. Now, with that being said, if we take a look at the depth of the roster at the middle linebacker position, I'm telling you right now, they do not have another middle linebacker on this team. They have players who could play it if you needed them to, but the drop-off from moving a player into that position is going to be pretty stark. And hmm. they, and that was something that they ran into last season was the depth at linebacker. You know, we saw Maurice yeah. Alexander more than I cared to see Maurice Alexander. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Although you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> right. So – but it seems to be like that's a, we like we take a look at the salary cap and we go, oh, wow, Bean's got like $19 million to play with. I can't believe we have all this money. And this is where you're saving, it, right? Yeah. You're saving it in your linebacking position because you've got two guys still on rookie deals. You just signed AJ Klein to a not super big contract. But then after that, it's a just a desert of players. Well, I'm, right? I'm looking at it right now. You got Voshan Joseph, Tyler McKeevich, right. Tyrell mm -hmm. Dodson, Mike Bell, mm -hmm. Corey Thompson. Uh, and uh, Delshawn Phillips. Right. It's, you know, it's it's the first time me reading a couple of those names out loud. <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask you, how many of those guys could you pick out in a lineup? Oh, my God, no. <laughs> this guy here is dead. You know? Cross him off, then. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking that, do I agree with your assessment that this team is in a lot of trouble if if Edmonds goes down in the middle. Even though, and I, and I like to go move on to your point as far as the forced fumbles go as well. But do you think it? I, I just don't think it's that much of a drop off if Milano had to go into the middle. I think it's. I think it costs you at the will position. Well, then right? you have Klein there, and you're you're going to play mainly the Bills. I mean, truth be told, they played mainly a two linebacker set a lot of times with nickel with a big nickel. Right. Uh, or the Buffalo nickel, they like to call it. So, that, you know, you, you, all you have is Edmonds and, and Milano on the field. So, right. in that respect, if you had to – and Edmonds played 100% of the snaps. And so did sure Milano did. when he wasn't hurt. Sure did. So, you're talking about A.J. Klein, a combo of A.J. Klein and Matt Milano. You're, yes, you have a drop-off. That's no question. You're going to have a drop-off. A significant one, though? I don't know if it's significant. I just don't – Well. I, I don't really expect the Bills. I think the Bills were running two linebacker sets last year because they were trying to generate pressure with with Zoe. Um, you know, you couldn't really ask Zoe to step back, but he was definitely a player that you wanted on the field because he's a real heady player. 
Yeah. Um, you know, he could take running backs out of the game, even when he was in blitz packages. Um, yes. You know, you still get he would recognize quickly when he wasn't going to get home and then try and leak out and, and help cover the, you know, the running backs out in the flat. Real heady player. Um, that player's not on this roster anymore. No. Right. No. So I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I really feel like the Bills are by signing Klein saying, listen, we want to go back to three linebacker sets. We look at this defensive line. We should be able to get there with four. Yes. Right. Yeah. And the Bills struggled a little bit by bringing five guys a lot because that made them that forced them out to play man coverage. And that exposed Levi Wallace, you know, like yes. there were some there were some prices to pay to have Zoe on the field. And that was if you're bringing five man pressure, you're asking the back end to play man and only two linebackers. That's going to cost you in the run game um, because guys can get to the second level a little quicker. And there's not a lot of help at that second level when they get there. Well, now that you, I mean, the fact that you have AJ Klein, Tyler McKavich, and I can't remember who else it was. So let's just say, let's say, let's go, let me look at the Vernon Butler. Okay. I'm just picking a name out of the hat. Okay. So you, okay. Got, you got your, um, your, your Tyler McKavich, who's mainly a special teams guy. You got your AJ Klein, who's mm-hmm. your will, and you got your Vernon Butler, who's your defensive tackle. Those are the three guys that mm-hmm. are, essentially asked to do the role of a Lorenzo Alexander that he did himself. Guy that right. can play defensive tackle, guy that plays special teams, guy that plays linebacker. Does that change the defensive philosophy because and put more of an onus on Edmonds? Because we know Klein's faster, he can cover, he can he can he, he doesn't have to always go forward like like Zoe had to. So do you think that takes pressure off of Edmonds or puts more pressure on the fact that he has to know even more of his personnel rather than all right, Zoe's blitzing this down, or Zoe's in coverage this down, or you know all that stuff. So, do you think? And and I don't want to say that you know Lorenzo Alexander had such a huge impact on the defense, but he did wear a lot of hats. He did he did simplify a lot of things for this defense for you. You you, you think that you're coming out and facing a four three, and then Zoe puts his hand in the dirt, and you're like, oh, it's nickel. What mm-hmm. am I gonna do? So, right. Um, do you think that puts more on on Edmonds's plate, or do you think that takes him off? Well, first off. Tyler McKavich, just to clarify, the most defensive snaps he's played his entire career was 60 in one season. So well, don't just, even talk to me about Tyler McKavich playing deep. I'm not saying that. Don't I said he was the special teams guy that fills Zoe's role. He's the special right. teams guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you there. But they do have um, him at middle linebacker. It's kind of funny. They do. Yeah, they, they do. <laughs> um, so I, I think this is kind of twofold, right? Yeah. One, this is ripping the Band-Aid off because his rookie season, he had Kyle and Zoe. Yes. His second season, he had Zoe. And this season, all that help's gone, yes. right? So his help's got to come from the back end. If he's going to get any assist, it's got to come from Hyde, right? It's got to come from Hyde and Poirier on the back end. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as running everything from linebacker forward, this is Edmund's season to have to shine. Like, this is the sink or swim season. Yes, um, it's cer- He's certainly the athlete to keep up. Like, there's no, there's no doubt about that. But you take a look at the help that he's had. All that help's gone now. Um, you know, losing Zoe, I think, is more uh, of an issue in recognizing coverage and recognizing pressure because Edmonds is good when he gets to pressure. But I don't know how good he is at recognizing when other people should be bringing pressure. Okay. Yeah. I can I can get behind that. Which which is gonna it's gonna put more on his plate to direct traffic. So you, mm-hmm. we might see his tackle numbers go down even more, right? So, mm-hmm. it, but if if the team as as a whole as the team defense is, um, it's just like when you when you have a player on the offense that's one clear dynamic player. Like let's say a Le'Veon Bell for the Jets last year, he mm-hmm. was the number one player that you had to stop if you wanted to stop the Jets offense. Right. Being so versatile and having so much talent around him, as far as Edmonds goes. If he does have a fall off in tackles, I'm not going to be worried about that because it's not like you could just focus on him like a J.J. Watt. If you didn't get Watt blocked, get play was over. So mm-hmm. you had to tailor everything toward Watt. It's not like right. that with the Buffalo Bills defense. You can't just say, we're going to take out Tremaine Edmonds this game and then we're going to win. No, because you're going to get a bunch of other guys that are freaks that are going to be coming after you. Right. He just has to coordinate all that stuff. And you- Go ahead. No, I was going to say, you'll be able to tell whether Edmonds is doing his job or not if the Bills are just bringing four. If the Bills can just bring four, then Edmonds is doing his job. 
he's not he's not blowing pre snap reads. You know, he's he's not. If okay. the Bills can get home in four, that's going to allow Edmonds to play, right? And if the Bills can get there with four, that's going to allow him to do what he does best, and that's cover sideline to sideline. Like there's, there's not many middle linebackers that I've seen in the last 10 years who can cover the ground that Tremaine Edmonds can cover. He's scary. He's scary. He's, yeah. It's, it's scary. Yeah. So hashtag nation, throw it out in the comment section. What do you, uh, what are your expectations of Tremaine Edmonds in year three? And what are some things that you, you can throw in stats? You can throw in anything like that. Let, uh, let Paul and I know. And uh, um, we'll try to get back to you on that, but let me know what your expectations are of Tremaine Edmonds in year three. 